All right, welcome one and all to Illustration Masterclass for this Friday, February 18th. I'm your host, Kyle T. Webster. I'm glad you're all here. And we're going to do some painting today to pretty much finish up our uh, winter monster that we've been working on these past few classes. Um, and I'm going to be doing this with those brushes from last week, these gouache brushes, which are really fun to use. Uh, I'll also show you that I've made a few small adjustments to how they behave, and I'll show you why I've done that and uh, show you how you can do that yourselves, okay, if you want to try painting like this. Um, let's say hi to some folks who are joining us over here on Behance. I see Biola and Mercurial. Hello, hello. And Struffy, what's up? Uh, Creo, how you doing? And I see uh, Wade is here. Wade, very fine artist, uh, joining us here. Vanessa and Laura, nice to see you. Umicorn, hello. And Fergie, hello, hello. I'm um, glad you're all here. If you're watching over on YouTube or Twitter, remember that on behance.net slash Adobe Live, I am reading the chat, okay? So if you have questions for me throughout the uh, class, you can go ahead and ask over there on Behance. Um, now, we are going to be doing some painting. We're going to jump right to it and see how much we can get done today. So let's do that. We're going to jump over here to Photoshop. Now, um, this is where we got from uh, last week, pretty much. I've been working on a little bit the last 10 minutes or so, just playing around here with this mouth, getting that uh, to look a little better. Um, and we're going to carry this through all the way with the icicles here that we have on the arms and the hands are gonna be carrots and then some sticks coming out the back of this creature as well, all right? Now, you may recall that we were working from a sketch and you can still see evidence of that with the pencil lines, okay? Uh, but what I did was, in the last uh, class, you may remember I, after painting for a little while, felt pretty confident that I understood the drawing and I decided to just take the sketch and merge that layer with the painting. So doing that then is nice because all of the line work and then also a little bit of the tone that I had in the sketch, there weren't a lot of values in it. I didn't really go all out with uh, darks and lights or anything, but some of that still shows through and it's gonna come through in the painting as well because I'm using brushes that are pretty translucent, um, <clears throat> which is not to say that I can't get them to a full opacity, uh, which I can obviously, if you look at the color here, um, things are going all the way through, uh, but it does allow me to do things where if I wanna have some of that line work show through, I can, that's a nice thing to be able to do. Uh, so there you go. Um, RB, what's up? Nice to see you. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Christelle. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining us as well. Uh, remember, if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat and I'll answer them as we go. But let's see how far we can get. Now, I'm using a library of brushes. Okay, we talk about libraries from time to time. The great thing about libraries is they travel with you wherever you go. So if I were to go over to a friend's house in, say, Singapore, and I did not bring my laptop with me, but my friend has Photoshop, I could sign in on my friend's computer as me, as Kyle, and I could then open up my libraries and there you go, my brushes are right there where I left them in that brush library, along with things like color palettes and color themes, uh, different images, photography, whatever it is, vector shapes, um, fonts, all kinds of goodies that I take with me in my little suitcase um, of goodies, which is my Adobe libraries. So um, in this instance, I'm just using a select few brushes to paint this and I wanted to keep it, keep it simple and keep them all together. So I just put them in the library. And at any point, if you want, you know, you say you're done with these, you don't think you'll use this library again, you just delete the library or whatever. Um, but it's a really convenient thing. Uh, also remember that if you create a library of brushes in Photoshop, that library will actually instantly materialize like magic the next time you open Fresco. You go to your brushes and you start scrolling down past the default sets of brushes and you'll see all of your libraries. And whichever library you create is just gonna magically show up, which is also pretty nice. So if you wanted to take this illustration and go work on it, you know, uh, while lounging in a hammock, you could do so with your iPad and you'd have the same brushes available to you to just keep on working. Because remember, Fresco files are cloud PSDs. They're cloud Photoshop documents, which means they just travel with you as well no extra work has to be done. Your Photoshop files will show up the same way as well if you are choosing to save them to the cloud. So that's pretty cool. Alrighty, enough of that. Let's get to painting. So I'm using right now this gouache adjusted brush, which is really the gouache G edge brush, okay, or soft edge, pardon me, the gouache G edge soft brush. But what I've done with this brush is let's take a look at the settings here. In, um, 
transfer, I've go ahead and I've gone ahead and reduced the uh, minimum um, opacity to 60%. It's lower than usual. Okay, so I wanted to have a little bit more transparency. That is what I've done with that brush, um, and that's pretty much the only adjustment I made there. But doing something like that, saving a variant of a brush. Uh, is a great thing to do and being able to play with the settings for these brushes is also super handy. If you look over here inside the mouth, I've got these little dots, you can see all those. Part of that comes from the texture of the brush, but I've also got this adjusted spatter brush called Spatter Snowman. And what that comes from is in the Mega Pack paint box, there is a brush that's just called Spatter, okay? And what I did was I took that brush and I went over here into the settings and I transfer uh, settings. I went ahead and reduced to 30% for opacity jitter, or rather for opacity, there's no jitter there. But for opacity, it's reduced to 30%, still controlled by pen pressure. And that's gonna give me the ability to do things like this. If I just come out here to the side, I can just build up spatter like that. All right, and then I could grab another color, come over that, sort of soften that a little bit, All right? Grab my background color and so on. And you can see that by sampling those three colors and then painting with that spatter, I get that nice effect right there. And that's what I'm doing to sort of bring back a little bit of that snow texture and break up some of the edges with this uh, monster so that everything doesn't look too too clean, too sharp, or I don't want it to. The only thing I've done since we last met last week uh, was I added, if you look very closely, there's this little hit right here. Let me just go back to my uh, gouache brush here. There's this little hit. I'll use my lasso too so you can see it right there see that warm bit of like a sort of an orangey pink kind of a color and there's a little bit more of it right there a little bit more of it right there um this was a trick i was taught with traditional painting back in college and i, I forget about it all the time and i also forget what it's called I, I, i'm always going to get this wrong i can't remember if it's subsurface scattering or um or something else it's one of those painting terms that just never stuck with me I know what it does and I know how to kind of replicate it, but I don't know what it's called. Um, and what it is, is this thing where you have a transition from a shadow to a light, especially with like a, with a cast shadow, um, where you get this edge that you can, you can warm it up or make it cooler. You change the hue basically a little bit. Uh, and it just creates this really vibrant kind of effect. It's really lovely. Um, and it's like taking what happens in the real world in the physical world and just kind of like exaggerating it, I guess, is one way to, to sort of describe what's going on there. Um, and I just love the way that looks. And I, I thought, you know, it could really use that right there. And so I just went ahead and added it because why not? Um, if anybody wants to, in the chat, go ahead and remind me what the heck that's called. Maybe Wade knows. I know he does a lot of painting. Um, but what the heck is that? I can't remember. It's just one of those neato things you can do. Uh, when you're painting, and I'll employ it sometimes when I'm working, uh, but I honestly don't even know what it's called. So, shame on me. But it's hard to keep track of all these things the older I get. I just can't remember things anymore. I can't remember the name of an actor and something. I'll be like, oh yeah, it's so-and-so, you know, the one from the thing. And I'm sure I'm not alone, or if I am, boy, that's depressing. Please tell me I'm not. All right, there we go. Just kind of pulling that out a little bit, softening that, that whole area there. I want to just sort of do that. And every time you see me smudging, the way I'm doing that so quickly is I'm hitting the S key because I have a hotkey assigned to smudge. Um, and that makes it super easy for me to just bounce back and forth between painting and smudging, which is so convenient. So convenient. There we go. Um, alrighty, so back to our uh, mouth here we were just working on. You can see that I just went very subtly from a light here, which is basically white, down to this blue. I wanna show that if our light source is kind of like this, right, coming from the top left and sort of facing our monster, um, that would account for why we have shadows here. And then as this turns away from the light, gets a little darker, right? And same here, the underside of uh, the quote unquote jaw. You know, I don't wanna really say jaw because, um, you know, I want this, he's made out of snow. 
you know, does he really have any bone structure in there? Eh, I'm going to say no, but, um, and so here I'm going a little darker, right? And what I'll do is I'll just bring that out like this. And then as I come around, you can see me using less and less pressure like so. And then what I do is I grab this color next to it and I just kind of softly paint over all that. And that knocks it back a hair, see? Like that. And then I can go ahead and I can give that a bit of a smudge, right? Especially on the edge here where that lip curls over. And then if I want to, I can use that spatter brush right here and I can come with the white and just kind of hit some areas here and there so that just feels a bit more snowy. All right? see how we do that? That's the way we do it. And I just kind of go back and forth and use this process all the way through until I'm happy with sort of the balance of the way the colors will, will um, transition from dark to light and and just the way everything is is shaping up um, and that's really it i just kind of repeat that process over and over again um gareth you suffer from leaky brain too good i'm not alone thank goodness we ran out of storage space says sig yeah i know time for a bigger brain gosh i don't know can you get brain transplants uh yeah i know I'm excited after all these days, I finally found how to make PS stop putting my document into a tab. I've been fighting, oh, into a tab. Are you using the view mode? F, 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 see that? Hit the F key, F as in Frank. Such a nice thing to be able to switch viewing modes. Alrighty, so we're going back to our gouache G adjusted brush. Make that a little bigger. And I'm just gonna hit all of this. Now with that slightly darker color there, this whole area, underside of the of the face, so to speak, right? It's really a side plane, but it's not catching quite as much light, so we're just gonna darken all of it. This brush is so nice and soft, I can do this very easily. Um, and then for contrast, I wanna hit this area right here with this really bright, cool white here. So I'm going to do that just like this. Boom. That needs to be a bit bluer. There we go. Right along that edge. See that? And that helps to define whoops, that uh, area there of the, of the face where the, the mouth is dropping down. Make that pop. There we are. Very nice. And then I come in and knock that back just a hair so it feels like we're getting the same light as the face at the top right there. Um, and that's a really easy thing to do. Just It's kind of like just a solid area of color, the top there. Um, and then I can grab this uh, slightly darker color here and just sort of softly throw that in as we're turning away from the light there. Okay, and then just bring this over that a little bit. Knock it up just a hair there in that transition. And then I can use that same spatter brush, spatter snowman right there, grab some of that, throw that on there, grab some of that white, cross over into that area. And that just makes that transition look nice and natural. Um, and what I'm gonna do is carry this color over here, all the way under the head, and then we're gonna take some of this and we're gonna add a shadow 
right here. We're going to make that a cast shadow, so it's going to get darker in just a second. First, I'm going to throw this in here. There we go. And I'm going to throw some reflected light on this chin um, momentarily, but first I want to get that just a bit, a bit darker right here. Checking the chat to see if anybody was able to throw in that vocabulary term about painting that I just couldn't remember. Maybe someone did. Um, nope, not there. Well, I guess I'll have to look it up and post it on Twitter later today. So I just have to do that. That will be my little task after the show. Just so we're all clear on what that is exactly. I don't want to leave you all hanging. It's not subsurface scattering is the kind of thing where like you hold your hand up to the light and it gets a little kind of um, more saturated kind of a glowing kind of a look to it, which is, you know, because of the translucency of your skin, um, that's what you're seeing there. That light is passing through and bouncing around in there, hence the term scattering. Uh, so that's not what I'm thinking of. That, that term popped in my brain, but it's the wrong one. All right, so let's soften that transition right there. I'll come back to our shadow now. We're gonna throw that in here. Make my brush a bit smaller, coming on this side here to get that nice and clean, like that. And then we're just gonna hit this. Holding the brush at a slight angle what that does is gives a little bit more texture like that. And then I can go ahead and I'm going to use that other smudge tool that I love. I'm going to probably set that to be my default smudge for now, which is this rough smudge. Um, just because I really like the way that works. It scatters everything slightly. You can probably see that as I'm doing this. See that? And that helps me to get that look of the snow um, that snow texture that I want in there as well. So then I can go ahead and grab this and I can just kind of speckle that in here and there. Like so. And now here We want to just hit this area carefully. Getting a little reflected light from the snow of his body up into that shadow. Okay.
come up here and get this lighter and be careful along the edge where I might still carry that shadow out a bit further in a minute but for now I'll leave it there I think it's okay but we do want to brighten this area here This is turning away as well, so it's going to kind of take that, that cast shadow. I'm just going to softly move it into this shadow as well, like this. You know, the last uh, class I did was on Wednesday where I was just doing pencil drawing. Um, I think it was with the pencil we used to sketch this, might have been, from the winter brush set called Tilty Variant. And one of the hardest things for me is, is transitioning from going from thinking about drawing and all the, way I, the ways I try and communicate with, with line, right, to then two days later for a for this being like, oh, now we're gonna paint, you know? And then just thinking about, oh, I gotta think about all that stuff that is a little different, that makes painting a different challenge, a different exercise, you know? Obviously they're related, but there are things I think about with painting that I don't think about when I'm drawing and vice versa. I'm trying to like live in these two worlds and make it all work. All right, so I'm gonna pause and see if there's any. Sfumato, no, Bruce, that's um, that's not it. That's working with really thin layers of oil. Chiaroscuro is uh, about just heavy darks and lights or high contrast. Um, I don't know what tenebrism is. Yeah, Wade, you're onto it there. Chromatic aberration. Yeah, what the heck is it? Golly! I don't know. But anywho, I'm gonna try and apply some of it right here. Because I can. Um, yeah, so like right here, I'm just gonna gently throw a bit of it right there. Ding, 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 ding. See that? Just along the edge. I don't know what the heck it's called. But it's a neat thing to to try. And then I just kind of like smudge it a bit. And as I get over here, I just kind of smudge it away. Yeah, I can't for the life of me think what it is. Drive me crazy. Looks cool though. See, you don't really notice it so much, but it does help with um, it does help with the the painting having a bit more punch, so to speak. You know what I mean? It really does. It's kind of a nifty thing. 
Now if I could only remember what it's called. Mike Ananian, that was the name of my painting teacher in college who told us all these nifty tricks about all kinds of things. Fantastic professor. Um, the kind of professor we should all be so lucky to have in school because they challenge you to be better. Um, A lot of the students in his class didn't want to be challenged. <laughs> they were happy with coming in from high school and being told they could really draw well and then leaving it at that. Um, and he had no tolerance for that, which I thought was awesome. But yeah, truly my favorite. Still teaching painting and drawing over at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro and um, still making incredible paintings. He does series of paintings. He'll do like a series every two or three years and then go have a show somewhere and, and just sell them. Um, but he's a great, great painter. All right, so why don't we move on to some of this ice here, okay? So first what I'm gonna do is grab this blue color here. I'm gonna make it a little bluer, there we go. And I'm just gonna come in here and get these shapes looking good. Makes me think of like these ice crystals or, or these, uh, yeah, these spiky ice crystals. I always think about Superman's Fortress of Solitude. How could I not? Because I was a very young kid when I saw Superman 2 in a movie theater. And such a uh, big deal to see that at that age you know amazing so he'll always be superman to me henry cavill's great but christopher reeve is my superman growing up and uh he's great what can you say very sad story of him having an injury while riding a horse and then becoming uh, paraplegic as a result of that. Um, but then he did great work when he was no longer acting. He did great work um, on that front to try and help with research for people who had been paralyzed in one way or another. Um, he didn't just sit around. He you know, went out there and did something. Couldn't do his job anymore, but he was very, very active in trying to improve the lives of others.
I also went and saw that Brandon Routh vehicle with Kevin Spacey and um, who else was in that? I don't remember. Kate Bosworth, I think was her name. That was okay, you know, but it's kind of hard to be the original. Scrafutosa Sig, I don't know, gosh. Spherochromatin. Spherochromatism, I don't know. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. I'll do a Google search later and I'll, I'll probably just be like, ah, there it is. Find it and just be thinking, oh yeah, how'd you forget that? But I know how I forgot it, because I don't say it every day or ever. <laughs> It's easy to forget things you never say, right? One of the nice things about working in Photoshop is what I'll do is I'll probably come in with a lasso tool after I do this and just like clean up that whole area just for the edges to be nice and sharp. Why not? You know, if you can do it, do it. So I'm bringing some of this white in here to transition from snow to, to icy shoulders. You know, I, I hate the internet and I love it. I was just thinking about this. Uh, you know, I want to find out what this painting term is. I can do that. I can search for that and I can find it. You know, it's, I know that there's so much poison and time wasting nonsense on the internet, but at the same time, isn't it amazing that you can look up literally anything whenever you need to and then be like, oh yeah, there it is. Yesterday I was desperately trying to find this game that I played in college called Return to Zork. My favorite adventure video game. And um, yeah, people on Twitter just like helped me to find places where I could buy it and then how I could install it on a Mac. Because as a Windows game, and the only Mac versions they had only ran on OS 9. I'm like, 20 years ago or whatever. So I got a, an emulator and I got the game and got it to work and I was just like, wow, without the help of the community to get me to figure that out, I mean, I really would have been like, oh, well, that was a fun game. I guess I'll never play it again. The main reason I wanted to get it was I wanted to show my kids <laughs> the game because I thought they would enjoy it. and. Uh, I'm going to show them that a little bit today. Because they're good kids and they need to see cool stuff. So here what I'm doing is just see I'm doing this sort of dark and light thing to kind of make these edges. See how that edge right there where we transition from light to dark. I want that to be... I mean, you could call it a core shadow, I guess, but it's just helping to accentuate how sharp those changes are. See what I mean? Try and keep those changes nice and sharp. So we throw more of these back here, just a few.
and we're getting somewhere here so these are coming together quickly and we're just going to grab that nice dark color we've been using and run that along the edge there and then just pull that here and there just to show oh yeah that's a sharp sharp shape right and I want to understand that and if I want to now, what I was saying earlier is like, I could do this. I could just say, all right, you know, for some parts of this, I want to leave it softer edge. But you know, I could, I could come in here and I could just do this, just kind of get really specific. You know, use the tools that you have available to you. If, if you need a sharp edge, uh, just go ahead and make it. Before the fact, after the fact, it doesn't matter. You know, I could have made this shape and then I could have painted inside of it. I could have made a mask. I mean, it doesn't matter. There's so many ways to do it. Lots of ways to skin a cat as the weird expression goes. Um, and in this case, I just thought after, after painting it, why not just go ahead and try something like that? You know, and that makes it all nice and sharp there. And that's cool. Works for me. See? Nice, nice, nice. Um, we're not going to carry on too much with what's going on here. Um, but I can smudge it a little bit to sort of say, oh, as we come down here, we're just transitioning to the paper and we're just going to soften that a little bit. You know? And that works. Uh, and then here, you know, you'd have a, an arm coming out. So if I wanted to grab this color and just sort of indicate that there is something carrying on there. There's more happening there. We throw a little shadow there. Soften that. Grab that new color and just put that there. And then I can take the smudge tool and just take all of that and blend it out into the paper a little bit. So we know something's happening there. We're continuing that shape. Um, so we don't just leave it all completely empty, you know? All right, let's get to let's get to some carrot fingers here. I mean, I could do more of these spiky things over here, but I do want to try something new and different before we run out of time. So I'm going to pop over here to some orangey colors. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to do that. All right, so number one. Probably wanna go a little redder for this. There we go, a little darker, a little redder. And as before, I'm going to paint over this um, with some lighter colors. But I just wanna get the shape here with this darker color. Sort of like getting a sort of a silhouette, I guess. I have these little bumps and things, which I can I can either add later, or I can suggest some of them now, I guess. Something else with carrots on the Illustration Masterclass, if you recall, about a year ago we had an editorial episode talking about vision and one of the uh, whether carrots do or do not really have any impact on the health of your eyesight, health of your eyes, and all that. And we did a series of three illustrations to illustrate that for a imaginary article, you know. That was a fun one. You can go back and watch that. They're all archived on Behance and on YouTube. Um, but the fun thing about that was experimenting with style and, and something I do all the time, which is just try different styles all the 
time for all kinds of different uh, projects and just to see just to see what fits you know I'm gonna cool this down a little bit and in the background here suggest the thumb peeking out there and we're gonna go darker and less saturated and we're just gonna throw a shadow in there paint that over gently gently careful careful and then Here's the rest of the sort of hand, if you will. All right, let's go bright and let's hit this. That. And then we're going to come along the edge here. Where those transitions are. And then what we do is You just kind of add some details. And you could do this with a lighter color. You don't want to go so dark as that. So I can just pass back over that and make sure it's not crazy. A bit more saturated. Like this. Now the nice thing about these lines too is they'll help to show which way things are like moving it they're traveling these are cross contour lines essentially they're going to travel across the uh, carrot surface and that gives us more information about what that carrot's doing form wise you know what i mean so then i can come over here and i can do some Hit them with some light bits. And when you get into this bit underneath, just carry that. Now, if you want to, you could do things like this. You can get fancy and you can grab some of that blue and you can throw it into the shadows. See that? Makes a nice effect. Just very gently do that. And that is a couple of things. One, it adds some color harmony. So you're bringing some of this color here into um, this part of the painting that has its own you know, um, a color that doesn't, you don't see anywhere else in the painting. Um, right, it sort of stands out a little funny. And another thing you can do is you could take like a color like this, which is sort of a more neutral, sort of a gray, make your brush really big and just gently sort of scrub over the carrot. And what that does, if you notice, is it just desaturates it a little bit right like that and then it kind of all just falls into place um 
So if I don't do that, I have a kind of a really bright orange carrot, which is fine. Um, these are the kinds of choices you can make. You can say, ah, I want to kind of knock that down a little bit. Um, it's up to you. And it's probably fine to leave it as is, but these are the kinds of things you can do really quickly and you can experiment with. You could also do it on a separate layer. Um, you know, you get the idea, right gang? You get the idea. And as with anything painting wise, you know, you're, you're there to represent something in a way that photography can't, right? Not that we could ever photograph this character because he doesn't exist. But my point being that like, if you could bump up the saturation of something and make it more fill in the blank than real life, that's kind of one of the beautiful things about painting is that it can do that, right? That's why we like to look at paintings because paintings do that. They take reality and they just sort of make it recognizable as real, but somehow more real than real, or just more, if it's colorful, it's more colorful than colorful. If it's beautiful, it's more beautiful. That's the cool thing about, about art and paintings, and I just, I love that. I just love it. It's gonna throw some little bits. off here. So, um, yeah, what do you think about that idea about how paintings do what they do? Does that resonate with all of you? I hope so. All right, so do we want to continue with the hand? We only have about like nine minutes left. Do we want to mess around with this arm over here? You know, I could I could quickly suggest these other fingers if you like, you know, just sort of do this, just kind of go this, there's a little bump right there. Just kind of hit these main areas like this. so that we can move on and you know, come back and play with some of those other tricks we were just doing a moment ago, if we want to, right? We can, um, but I could do this. I could grab that blue and just take this whole area and throw it into shadow with that blue and do the same thing over here, right? Hopefully this is giving you all some ideas. That's all I want. I just, I want you to take away from these, uh, the series of, of shows, this masterclass series, ideas for your own paintings. Like how can I, you know, just try something new and different. Try something you've never tried before that you think that looks cool. I think that would apply to what I'm trying to do with my work, right? Hopefully, that's what's happening here. All right, questions. I look away and carrot hands. Ha ha ha. Painting another winter cat monster. That's cool, Merc Mercurial. I'd like to see that. Oh man, uh, Wade, you looked in color and light. Yeah, that would be the place to find it for sure. Um, yeah, well, what can I say? As long as it doesn't wake me up in the middle of the night, I need my sleep. I don't want to be like sleeping and then I'll like wake up and be like, oh, it's called this. No, I need my sleep. All 
All right, anywho. Anywho, anywho. Let me know if you have questions about anything. Um, you know, we're almost out of time, sadly, uh, but made some good progress. And uh, for the next master class, we're not gonna carry on with this because, you know, can't do four classes in a row on this. I think it's, it's nice that we got somewhere with it and we're able to share some tricks and some techniques and things like that. Um, but it's time to move on. So maybe I'll finish this in my own time, but you can see now where we're going with this. And we, the things we did over here, right? You can see how uh, we painted that. And even there, you know, we could add more things like a bit more of a reflection a reflective quality to those if you wanted to. Um, you know, you could do things like this and get lazy, free transform, stuff like this. You really wanna just speed things along because you got things to do, we got things to do, right? Let's see. All right, cool, let's move on with that and grab, grab some other section of it. Uh, Command J, flip vertical, transform, you know, shorten those up like that, whatever. But this is the thing, you're, if you're just trying to create an idea, a concept, you know, no harm done, you could merge that layer with the bottom one and then start playing with that that whole area if you wanted to. You know, reposition it, resize it. Um, grab your smudge tool, start blending it into what's already there on the canvas. Right, there are no rules, okay? No one's gonna put you in timeout for doing things like this okay this is this is the digital painting we're just trying to get an idea down right we got to use the tricks that we have at our disposal so use them use them or lose them well you won't lose them they're still there but you know you can see how quickly i could just come in here and like modify these slightly um or not we're getting the idea across. We're, we're doing what we need to do here. I'm trying to show that these are spiky and they are sharp and they're icy and all this kind of stuff. Right, get a big fat brush, throw some white over that. Start to kind of blend it in with the shoulder. Right, no one gets in any trouble there. Okay, ta-da. All right, well. There you go, gang. Um, thanks, Bruce. Yeah, it's a scary snowman, Garvey. I, I, that was kind of the idea. Some people think it's a little bit too sort of like, uh, you know, angry old man, get off my lawn. Um, and hey, I hear those people and I, I get you. Maybe not so scary, just kind of comical. Um, and you know, that's fine too. It could be anything, I don't care. Uh, for those sticks in the back, gosh, it's so easy. I just grab a color like this, make my brush a little smaller, and just start painting those shapes in, you know, and then later come in and hit with some darks and some lights to kind of make it a bit more um, interesting and have some more dimension, you know. Uh, but other than that, we're kind of on the way. We're, we're doing well there. We got, we got a lot farther than I thought we'd get um, these past few shows, so we're good. We're good. All right, gang, thanks for hanging out with me, and uh, everybody have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remember to be kind, and I'm going to say ciao for now. Bye, everybody. <laughs>